Hello and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. Today I want to show you how I go about creating a red work or single line stitch embroidery design. I am using Janome Digitizer version 5.5 um, but the skills can be transferred to any digitizing program and every program has its own quirks and abilities what I'm trying to show you is the basic skills required in digitizing this style of design so the first thing that I want to do is come through and insert some artwork to play with and so I'm coming up to my main menu here and I'll go into my artwork and choose that artwork that I'm going to do. Now, I currently have a 5.5 um, by 8 inch hoop selected. And you can see that my artwork is quite a bit larger than that. So what I'm going to do is come through and if I hold down the shift key before dragging one of the corners in on my design that will resize that design from all edges now what I then want to do is just look at the size of the artwork and I can do that by just coming across here um, and putting my mouse pointer at the um, at one of those points and what I'm looking for is just to make sure that the height is larger than the width because otherwise I would just swivel my hoop around to make the most of the design and to ensure that I don't accidentally move the design around while I'm working I'm going to right mouse click while that design is selected and lock that artwork in. You can tell that the artwork is locked in because over on the side here next to my artwork is the little lock sign. Now you might be tempted to come through and select an auto digitizing um, mode and just create your outline. I want to recommend against that because you won't get a file that stitches out beautifully and sequentially. Instead, what I want to do is come down to my digitize option on my panel, digitize an open shape, and I'm interested in the single run and the triple run. I like using a triple run when I am um, creating red work designs because it just gives a little bit more oomph to the design. I also like to choose a stitch length of three millimeters just because it's my favorite stitch length. Once I've set those standards I'm going to leave the thread on red at the moment because it will contrast nicely with the blue allowing me to see where I am. To zoom in and out on my design I use the Z and the Shift Z button and on my digitizer the mouse commands that I use are a left mouse click to create a straight line and you can see here that as and I'll go through that again to get rid of any stitches that you place you just use the backspace key um, so if I just want to create a straight line I use the um, left mouse key if I want to create a lovely curved line and have that curve be shaped by itself I use the right mouse key. So I come along and I 
curve around that line with the right mouse key and then hit enter which creates the line. Once again um, I can use either enter or I can use spacebar to create those stitches. Either one works. From there um, what I need to do and I want a, I want to create a red work that does not have any or well any jump stitches would be preferable but has as few jump stitches as is possible so what I'm going to do is now use my single run line and pull that line up before I come through and repeat it with a triple line. So all that we've done here is we have utilized the, the single stitch and then a triple stitch to create those um, those lines that can go back over each other without causing too much thickness. And that is really the trick of red work. Now I do apologize if I am coming in too close for you, but you know, I'm getting older. If you're not happy at any point with where you've placed your lines, and I'm thinking I could have made that a little bit smoother, you can come through and select the shape that you've made and then choose to reshape that and by clicking with your right or your left mouse button you can choose to make either a um, straight node or a curved node so the straight nodes are the little squares and the round nodes are curved lines. That's a nicer line. Now if a line that you are creating um, is a more intricate line and you want to get things exactly the same you have the option on the panel on the left hand side to come through and making sure that you've got that um, line that you want to duplicate and reverse select it select the backtrack option and that backtrack option just reverses all of the stitches what I then need to do is come through and select the triple run so that those stitches are triple stitches now remembering that we are looking at this in minute I mean at the moment I am more than a thousand percent um, increased in size what you will see here is lots of smaller stitches so even though we have set our stitch length to three millimeters which we have along here as the that is set as a maximum as the stitches need to move around curves the digitizing program decides exactly how large the stitch needs to be Okay, so you can see here I'm coming through with a single run and then with the triple run. And we're just going forwards and backwards and creating, or as we create, our design. Now some of the questions that I get asked um, 
one of the biggest ones is do you have a plan when you start out my general answer to that is kinder um, I realize that that is not much of an answer but it is an incredibly truthful one um, so what I do is I might come through and I might think okay I'm gonna go there and then I'm gonna go there um, what I don't have in my mind is I'll do that one then that one and then I'll go around here before I come back up there um, so I'm a little more I don't know that lackadaisical is really the right word um, but you know I'm not totally offended by it either um, if you are a person who needs to know exactly where you are going get your artwork and print out a copy and start tracing it with a pencil and remember all of this is just about making a beautiful stitching experience for somebody so we have all been there where you've purchased a design and it just is a crappy stitch out um, with lots and lots of jump stitches and all the other ugly stuff that is what I am trying to avoid here I want to give the customer the best experience possible um, and that's how I taught myself to digitize I watched the contemporaries in the space when I started um, I would sit there and watch the Sioux boxes and the hatched in Africa's um, projects stitching out and from there I learned what I wanted um, and you know what underlay was what um, what good stitching meant to me okay so where am I here And this just goes on and on. You are really only using two different um, two different stitches, the triple run and the single run. And yes, it is an awful lot of monotonous back and over each other um, and that's probably one of the one of the things that I find interesting with digitizing um, and you know m maybe I'm just a really bad teacher um, because one of the first things I find once I start teaching how to digitize is people realize that it's a lot more monotonous and boring than you might think it is um, and there is so much more precision involved than you might think there is that you know, they're then much happier to purchase designs now that was a really long set of stitches that I don't want to bother replicating perfectly so in this instance I will use the backtrack again and then change those to a triple one thing I haven't done as you come along is going through and saving and um, normally I would sit there and I would put my save on much much earlier in the process mainly because I'm always scared of um, of having a project fail um, I've been around computers for too long now what I did there was I couldn't quite remember where our last stitch fell so if I come up on the true view option here 
that then shows me this square marker which is where our last stitches have sat and you can get the same thing by um, uh, do, 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 do. I think it's okay by using the shortcut key of T once I've done that because I'm now out of the digitizing sequence I need to go back and choose my open shape and my triple run and now's the time that I start to think and you always want to make sure you have an exit plan so what we've got here is an awful lot of stitches that have to come into the same place so I'm going to do a single row stitch there. I would like to make my exit this part of the neck. So that means I need to have this set of stitches as a single um, as a single set of stitches. Now if I wanted to remind myself I could come through and color those yellow just so that I knew exactly where I am. Okay now so I'm working again and I'm just working with the long-term plan of ending up down the bottom of that hair that is within the clip. And um, the other thing is there is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, your, the, it is all about getting to the best outcome for the design. And you can do that six ways from Sunday. It really doesn't matter where you start. It is more um, that you are creating a good stitching experience. For instance, I digitized this same design on a Facebook Live session and um, I did it with a new starting, with a different starting point. And that was more just about how I was feeling on the day. And there you go, that hair bow is done. And we've now got our little girl's arms. I love it when you get on a um, on a real run and you get lots and lots of stitches done all at once. There's there's a real sense of achievement about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just. Um, put myself on fast forward so that you can see how the rest of this red work design is created and then we'll come back and have a look at how everything um, has come together.
Okay, so here we have our design so far and we do not have a single jump stitch. So that is all going to stitch as a single unit. If you want to see what your design looks like without your uh, um, artwork behind it, just select D um, and that will turn off or on your artwork. Now what I am missing here is my eye and without the eye she looks a little bit strange. So I'm going to come through and using my curved um, stitching and a fill of satin I want to come through and create that iris and then I'm going to go back through with an open space and add in our line stitch. So that is now my basic design. Before I do anything else, I am going to hit save. What I now want to do is come through on the resequence panel on the right hand side and choose to unlock that artwork and then I want to delete it. I don't like leaving my artwork sitting behind there just because it bugs me. Now the only other thing that I have to decide is whether or not and I'm just going to change that just a little bit just to a hundred. I can now come through if I want and to make things fit a little nicer into <coughs> my hoop I can play with stretching things out and you can always go backwards with control Z but I just want to see what that looks like and I actually think that looks quite cute. My other option because it's a much more square design would be to go and consider using my square hoop and let's see what would happen if I was making that around 200 millimeters. That looks quite cute. Now do you remember when and I think it was back here around our neck area let's see if we can see it. when we created a yellow line and there it is there you can just see the outskirts of it there just to show us where we were coming back to. This is the time that you now come through and select the entire design and I do that using the control A um, keyboard shortcut and you change everything to the one color. So you now have a um, design that is ready to stitch. We can have a look at what it's going to stitch like simply by coming through and using the stitch player to play that design stitching out. And what the stitch player shows you is just any inaccuracies that you may have not noticed as you were digitizing.
Okay, I'm fairly happy with my design there. So I am going to, and I don't want to do that at all, I just want to show my design here and click on save and I'm ready to stitch it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed that digitizing lesson. I hope it's been informative and helped to clear up some of your digitizing questions. As always, please feel free to ask any questions um, on email at sales at Julie Hall Designs. Until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.